Hello F11 members and welcome back to part 2 of the Fundamentals of Post-Production Video Tutorials for Issue 45, October 2015. In part 2 this month I'd like to just talk to you about a few uh, requests that have been sent in by F11 members. Uh, a few uh, questions. Uh, so starting with one regarding how I cope now with the uh, increased storage um, requirements of shooting with uh, a 50 megapixel camera. Uh, how I deal with that. Well it, it is obviously a big issue. Our, our storage requirements just keep increasing more and more and more. So how we choose to store our images, how we shoot in the first place, all of this needs to be considered. Uh, the first thing to stress is that I always shoot uh, thinking in terms of quantity over quality. So I'm not just blasting away. Uh, I, I take care to, to shoot uh, tightly so that I'm not uh, just filling up memory cards with with rubbish so that's the first thing so look let's look on the screen here I have this shoot from the other evening on one-to-one -one tuition shot just down the road here in uh, Somerset and this is the village of Court and Denham and I will look at this shoot and choose the one image this one here that I want to work on the others similar to that picture I would have worked with the light as it gets better and I'll ch basically choose the best picture and just work on that. The others that haven't made the cut they just get deleted. It's as simple as that. I only want to keep the best. I will convert this end image into a master TIFF which gets saved to a separate hard drive which is backed up onto numerous hard drives actually uh, and I will also keep the RAW but only the one RAW of the image that I have chosen to work for work on so from this session this one session there will be maybe two or three pictures that I will choose to save uh, so our storage requirements are just for that RAW and the master TIFFs themselves. So that's really how we deal with it. Um, you will evolve your own uh, way. But I would say be ruthless. There is no point in keeping everything you've ever shot. It's just going to chew up and all your memory. The other thing is I had a request uh, a question from an F11 member saying he had been suggested that to start working on an image in the develop module first thing to do would be to set highlights and shadows to maximum recovery. Uh, quite frankly that astounded me. Um, here we have an image one of the, the image I'm going to work on. You can see the histogram is a, a really nice range of tones there. I've captured all there is to get there. There's no clipping of highlights or shadows. So if I set for example highlight recovery to maximum and shadow boost the shadows to maximum it, I start with a very very flat image. I cannot understand why you would want to do that is essentially what we're doing is looking or well my approach is to look at the image and asks what it needs. Do I need to pull back those highlights? Well yes a bit in the sky here but I can tell that I'm not losing I'm not clipping any information there uh, and do I need to boost the shadows? Maybe a touch down here but every image is different and I would look at just like any other slider here, just like any other adjustment in Lightroom, I'd look at the image and make a judgment on whether any adjustment is necessary, rather than starting with the maximum adjustment and working back. The only thing I would say in addition to that is that there's no right or wrongs here, but my whole ethos is built around the notion that the less you do to a picture, the better. Uh, so that's that. Uh, 
the next thing uh, we'll move on to is um, I've mentioned that I use a graphics tablet for my post-production I found it uh, very useful over the years and uh, it's difficult for me to show you here so we're going to schedule in a future uh, post-production video tutorial one dedicated to the graphics tablet and what its pros and cons are what it allows you to do and the final thing I'd like to look at is an F11 member has sent in a question regarding Adobe's camera calibration tab which is hidden away down here at the bottom of the develop module now if I click on this to open this up here's what we see what is this well basically every camera uh, eat different cameras have different sensors and those sensors record or capture light in a different way so if I was stood here taking this picture with a Nikon as opposed to a Canon there would be a slightly different look to the picture now we all shoot raw so how Adobe then interprets that raw information coming via the memory card from the camera sensor is what this tab is all about and we have if I click here on these options here we need to make sure that this is the latest the 2012 current process and then if we come down to the profile we see we have various options if I click on the drop down menu we have Adobe standard now what happens when a camera manufacturer produces a new picture uh, sorry a new camera is Adobe will test that camera they will get as soon as they possibly can a, a version of that camera and test how it captures it, color and tonal information they will make then make a profile which interprets that information and the way they do that is uh, basically by pointing the camera and at a color test charts and measuring the luminance and the vibrance of each particular color and then they make a profile which is based on their best best guess <laughs> or estimate I shouldn't I should say of how those colors are to be recorded and of course Adobe are pretty good at what they do so their Adobe standard is the starting point but of course there are other options here and these basically correspond to the picture styles that you would have in your camera now we all know picture styles don't affect the raw they only affect if you're shooting JPEG but they will also they can affect how your image is imported into Lightroom and if you didn't like the Adobe standard um, profile then you can choose camera faithful or any of these others which camera landscape which as you can see boosts very much boosts the greens here monochrome of course and neutral and portrait and camera standard so which is best where do you start how do you decide we need consistency in the way we work and this is based on really what kind of picture style you like I would say again here there is no right and there is no wrong but what you need to do is make a decision and stick with it now some people choose to go with camera if we look at the difference between camera standard and Adobe standard in terms of color quality very little difference there slightly brighter looking image I would say with the Adobe standard as to camera standard we have to realize though that what we're looking at here is not how the end picture is going to look 
but where the starting point is going to be. Uh, and I would say to you that you need to make a decision about how where you want your starting point to be. If you're unhappy with how your pictures look coming straight out of the camera, you could choose to choose one of these other camera profiles. I personally stick with Adobe Standard. I think they do a good job of determining the starting point for the luminance, saturation of all the different colors in the picture. And of course we have to remember it is just a starting point. I can now adjust my tone curve, my contrast, my black points, my white points. I can even, if I want to, go in and start adjusting the luminance and the saturation of individual color chan colors should I want to. I hardly ever do, but the option is there. So if that all seems a little bit uh, complicated, what I would say to you is pick one of these that suits how you want your starting point to be. I would say beware of the presets such as landscape or portrait because they are by default they're adjusting the saturation of certain colors over others boosting the greens in the landscape mode for example. I would say the choice is between Adobe Standard, Camera Faithful, Camera Neutral or Camera Standard. And as I said my particular choice is to go with Adobe Standard Let's just finish off this tutorial by determining what I would do to this picture and as always I'm just going to tweak the black point here. I'm going to now just add a little bit of just make it slightly darker here. I'm going to put just a touch of vibrance into the image. I'm going to sharpen it this is all stuff we've done so many times before. I'm going to pull back the highlights and I'm going to add a grad filter using the shift key to give me a completely level adjustment here. And just add a touch of density into the top of the image there. and a touch of contrast done that and do you see how quickly that was I would process this image in maybe 15 to 30 seconds that's how long it takes and with most of my pictures that's how it is post-production needn't be this long laborious task so please do continue to send in your questions. I will deal with them in little sessions like this. It's always good to know what you're thinking and I hope we're delivering what you need every month in these fundamentals of post-production video tutorials. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.